Welcome back, Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. I have been constantly re-watching the Obi-Wan Kenobi teaser trailer because dank Farrick, it is good. Stay hidden. See Ewan McGregor back as Obi-Wan Kenobi, living and hiding on Tatooine, watching over Luke. This show has the potential to be the best Star Wars done since the original trilogy. What? And along with Ewan McGregor's return to Obi-Wan Kenobi, we also got to see Joel Edgerton's Uncle Owen. He, of course, played Owen in the prequels. And while we didn't see or hear Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn's Force Ghost, I think that's who Obi-Wan was talking to at the beginning of this teaser. The fight is done. We lost. Now, of course, there's one villain that we would really love to see in this show, but to get to him, we have to explain the other ones that we saw teases for. So let's run down the villains that we saw, as well as the one that we got a little auditory tease for. First up, we see that there are Inquisitors hunting Obi-Wan. Where is he? Inquisitors are Force-sensitive individuals that do the bidding of the Sith. So while they're not technically Sith, they still use the dark side of the Force and, of course, have red lightsabers. Guess again. <laughs> We see some familiar faces, such as the Grand Inquisitor and the Fifth Brother, and a new face in Moses Ingram as Inquisitor Reva. And at the end of the trailer, we get a tease of the big man himself, Vader. Now, we've known for a while that Hayden Christensen would be returning as Darth Vader for the Kenobi series, and we've been promised a big rematch between the two. Have another swing at each other. It might be quite uh, satisfying for everybody. Obi-Wan and Darth Vader are, of course, one of the best adversarial duos in pop culture history. I'd say they're right up there with Batman and the Joker. But let's not forget that Darth Vader is not Obi-Wan's only big rival. In fact, you could argue that Obi-Wan has an even bigger enemy than Darth Vader, and that's Darth Maul. And we think that we might have heard a little tease to his return here. Yep, Duel of the Fates, one of the most iconic pieces of Star Wars music ever written. And when was the first time we heard Duel of the Fates? Mm -hmm. Duel of the Fates is most remembered for his presence in the iconic Darth Maul vs. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon duel. <laughs> And while the music did make a comeback in the duel between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader on Mustafar in Revenge of the Sith, oh. it is most remembered for its debut appearance in The Phantom Menace. Now, as I was saying, Maul is right up there with Vader when it comes to Kenobi's greatest foes. Don't get me wrong, Darth Vader is by far the bigger threat. And there's also far more emotion in the Vader-Kenobi rivalry. You were my brother, Anakin! I loved you! whereas Maul and Kenobi's rivalry seems to be more one-sided. Maul obsesses over Obi-Wan, while Obi-Wan doesn't give Maul much thought at all. I'm not sure I've made your acquaintance. That is a great I-don't-even-know-who-you-are moment for Obi-Wan. I don't even know who you are. But look, if you think about it, Darth Maul is actually partially responsible for the creation of Darth Vader. Maul played a major role in setting Anakin on his path to the dark side. Maul killed Obi-Wan's master, Qui-Gon Jinn, resulting in Obi-Wan taking Anakin as his Padawan. Promise me you will dream. Remember, Obi-Wan wasn't exactly on board with Qui-Gon training Anakin. Obi-Wan questioned why Qui-Gon was so insistent on going against the Council and training Anakin. The boy is dangerous. They all sense it. Why can't you? Obi-Wan took Anakin on as his Padawan solely because he promised his master that he would, not because he saw the same promise in Anakin that Qui-Gon did. Qui-Gon was the one person who wanted Anakin to become a Jedi, and he was killed before he could even begin his training. This put Anakin at odds with his new master and the Jedi Council from the start. So Darth Maul played a major hand in setting Anakin on his path to become Darth Vader. Now, if you're a more casual Star Wars viewer, you might be asking, hey, isn't Darth Maul dead at this point in time? Obi-Wan, give him a good halving. <laughs> yes, Obi-Wan did slice Darth Maul in two and he was presumed dead. But years later, in season three of the Clone Wars animated series, it was revealed that Darth Maul survived that halving. He lives in the outer rim. And then in season four, we meet Maul again. He's in a state of insanity on a junk planet and bound to a set of spider legs. It's what goes on in here that's hard. His brother, Savajo Press, finds him and helps him remember who he is, as well as the man who crippled him, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I must have revenge. Maul then becomes a major player in the Clone Wars series. We see him obsess over Obi-Wan, but we also learn a lot about his backstory with the Night Sisters. Reborn son of Dathomir. 
He then goes on to found several different crime syndicates, and he's involved in the Siege of Mandalore. In fact, Maul briefly became the King of Mandalore after winning the Darksaber in a battle with Pre Vizsla. And my rightful place is leader of Death Watch. Now, some fans say that bringing Maul into the Kenobi series would violate pre-established canon, let me explain. In Star Wars Rebels, we see Maul and Kenobi have what I guess you could call a rematch. In Star Wars Rebels, it's implied that Maul hasn't seen Kenobi since before the events of Order 66. Maul uses Ezra to help him open both a Sith holocron and a Jedi holocron at the same time. When opened, the holocrons can give them the answers to any questions they have. Ezra is looking for the answer to destroying the Sith, but Maul is searching for Obi-Wan. Maul exclaims that he sees nothing but oblivion and that he needs to go deeper. Ezra, however, sees the twin sons of Tatooine, alluding to Luke, the answer to destroying the Sith. And that's when Maul begins to see Obi-Wan, who, of course, is also on Tatooine. I see him. Remember Bendu's warning. Turn away before it's too late. And as Maul runs away to his ship, we hear him saying to himself, he lives, he lives. He lives. Now, at the time, it was safe to assume that Maul was referring to Kenobi surviving Order 66, and he's glad he survived so he can kill him himself. But it's never outright said that Maul hasn't seen Kenobi since prior to Order 66. We think that Maul and Kenobi may have had another run-in with one another between the Clone Wars and Rebels, and we think we may see that encounter in the Kenobi series. We're already seeing the Kenobi series retcon some old assumptions, such as Vader and Kenobi's history between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. It was always assumed that when we hear Vader say, I sense something, a presence I've not felt since that he's referring to when Obi-Wan left him for dead on Mustafar. But now we know that we'll be seeing Obi-Wan and Vader have an encounter that takes place between their Mustafar battle and their Death Star duel. So, while it was always assumed that their Death Star battle was the first time seeing each other since Mustafar, nothing was ever explicitly stated that made that unchangeable. So now, when Vader says, When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. He can be referring to their encounter in the Kenobi series, and nothing ultimately changes. Same can be said for Maul and Kenobi. While it's implied that they haven't seen each other since before Order 66, nothing is ever explicitly said that makes that unchangeable. So, we know that the Kenobi series takes place 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, which is right around the same time that Solo, a Star Wars story, takes place. And who is in Solo? Ray Park's Darth Maul. Bring the ship and come to me on Dathomir, and you and I will then decide what to do about the traitor. Now, in that clip, we hear that Darth Maul is on his home planet of Dathomir and that he's running the crime syndicate Crimson Dawn. And don't forget, he too is a survivor of Order 66. I want you to go to the detention level. Execute Maul. Yes, sir. All right, man. So, Maul is also likely being hunted by the Inquisitors as well. He is my enemy. All Inquisitors and their masters are my enemies. In Rebels, we also hear that the Seventh Sister says this when she lays eyes on Darth Maul. So, the rumors are true. Darth Maul lives. And I believe the Eighth Brother was actually searching for Maul in Rebels. So we've seen Maul and Kenobi cross sabers several times since their iconic duel in The Phantom Menace. But it's been 23 years since we saw Owen McGregor and Ray Park share the screen as their iconic portrayals of their respective characters. And now, here we are, all these years later, and they've both come back to Star Wars. I think Lucasfilm would be crazy to not have these two characters meet again in live action. I want to see a scenario play out where Kenobi and Maul, both on the run from the Empire and the Inquisitors, cross paths again. Maybe we could even see them have to work together to fight off the Inquisitors or even Darth Vader himself. <laughs> it would be so cool. But then, something happens that makes Maul loathe Kenobi even more. Keep in mind, Maul is a little obsessed with Obi-Wan. I mean, yeah, he cut him in half, I get it. But only after Maul murdered his master right in front of him. And then, years later, Darth Maul murdered the love of Obi-Wan's life, Satine Kreese, right in front of him. So at this point, I would say they're even, but for some reason in Rebels, Maul is still obsessing over Obi-Wan even after he got his revenge 17 years earlier when he killed Satine. I have come to kill you, but perhaps it's worse to leave you here festering in your squalor. So maybe we'll see Obi-Wan do something else that makes Maul hate him even more. And then, when Maul and Kenobi part ways in this series, Maul is left not knowing if Kenobi is alive or dead. And that's why in Rebels, he is delighted to see Kenobi is alive, so that now he can kill him himself. He lives. He lives. 
Now it would make sense for something to happen that leaves the Empire under the impression that Kenobi is dead. After all, the Inquisitors seem to have moved on from Kenobi and Rebels. And in A New Hope, we hear Tarkin say, Surely he must be dead by now. Oh, he's not dead. Not yet. Kenobi is no longer a concern of the Empire's, meaning that the Kenobi series will likely show Obi-Wan leave Tatooine to draw the Inquisitors and the Empire far away from Luke. And then, once it's safe, we'll likely see him return to Tatooine to continue watching over Luke Skywalker. Now, we theorized in our talkback video that this Kenobi series could show us how Maul ends up crash landing on Malachor, where we find him in Rebels, and that maybe Kenobi had a hand in that crash landing. You see, in Rebels, Maul tells Ezra that his ship crashed years ago and that he's been trapped there ever since sense. My ship crashed. I'm trapped, marooned. I've had to scrounge and scrape to survive. Now keep in mind that the Kenobi series and this scene in Rebels are about seven years apart, and Maul is putting on a major act when he meets Ezra. He's hunched over, he's limping around with a cane, disguising his voice as an elderly man. Please put your weapon away. I, I mean you no harm. Then, just a few moments later, he's jumping around fighting and his voice is back to normal. What fun! What fun. But hold on, Yoda used the cane, but he could still use the force to give himself the energy he needed to jump around and fight. Yes, but Maul doesn't go back to using the cane after the fight, nor does he hunch back over. He walks around upright with no limping for the remainder of the series. So Maul was definitely putting on an act. I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if we find out that Maul had been tracking Ezra for a while and had been planning to take Ezra on as an apprentice and use him for his own selfish goals. The first goal being to open the Sith Temple. Now I think that if we see Maul in the Kenobi series, that could just be the beginning of his Disney Plus appearances. Imagine a live action series with Amelia Clark's Kira and Ray Park's Darth Maul, all revolving around the Crimson Dawn crime syndicate. Maybe you could even bring back Han Solo and Lando. I mean, that tease at the end of Solo couldn't have been for nothing. Surely they had something planned. Granted, Solo didn't perform as well as they hoped at the box office, but I think that doing a Star Wars show with Amelia Clark would be a great idea. After all, she's best known for her role in one of the most popular series of all time, Game of Thrones. A show that starred her with Maul as the villain or even as a quasi-mentor role would be epic. This would also bridge the gap between the events of Solo and the Crimson Rain comic book series that's currently ongoing. That series details Kira controlling Crimson Dawn and how the Syndicate came to ruin. So, do you think we're going to see Darth Maul appear in the Kenobi series? Is that something you want to see happen? Or would you rather the series focus solely on Kenobi and Vader's rivalry? After all, this is a limited series consisting of only six episodes. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash this bell. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.